So if you don't know already, get server side props and get static props and all the other awesome functions of Next.js are dead. Yes, you are hearing it right. They are dead and completely abandoned by the new Next.js 13. And they were replaced by a completely brand new data fetching APIs that are so much simpler. So if you haven't heard already, Next.js version 13 has been finally released this week. And it's just not like any other Next.js version. It's a lot more than that. It has huge changes, huge core updates and new features that were added and community stuff that were added, like the community actually asked for so many stuff. And I was actually trying this version for this particular week and it looks absolutely amazing in terms of performance, in terms of like development experience and how you can actually build really awesome websites using the new awesome features. And one of the most important features that were added is actually the new routing system, the completely routing and layout system, plus completely reworked from scratch, the data fetching system. So if you look at the new documentation from the Next.js version 13, it says like on the data fetching fundamentals, it says like the get server side props and the old ways of fetching data and Next.js APIs are completely not supported anymore. And this is because now it has like a new app directory that was introduced with a completely new like and reworks from scratch, kind of like a layout and, and a routing system. And all of that actually just to make Next.js actually align with the new React features and the upcoming React version 18. So this is the actual release for this Next.js version 13 is an actual React 18 compatible version. And Next.js was able to actually move forward with this thanks to the new RFC from the React.js team. So if you look at the RFC in here on, on React.js RFCs, we're going to look at the React server components RFC. Now, what I mean by this RFC, if you look at the actual formatted data or like, you know, just the summary of this RFC in here, it says the RFC discusses upcoming features for React called server component. Now, actually, you can use components and these components can only run and will only actually run on the server without impacting the client and will have a zero impact on bundle size. So that means the code will never be downloaded to the client, helping reduce like bundle size, more performance, a little bit more optimized it's so much better. So I bootstrap a new project using Next.js version 13, which means I'm using the new app directory that was provided. I'm not going to go through the details of the layouts and the routing system. You can like read the docs to know more about this. I'm just going to specifically focus on the data fetching part and what's new in the data fetching and what kind of like replaces now the Git server side props and replaces the Git static props and the other most important functions for Next.js. So let's imagine this is the application we got a store products where an e-commerce store, you got low in and you can actually load a bunch of store products for you uh, with the price and everything and, and all these products obviously are loaded from an API whether you can load them from a database or something but in that particular example we're going to use an API to actually utilize and showcase how can you replace the git server side props and the git static side props so all we're simply doing is just like having a web page in here we're going to go load that from an API uh, like get all the array of products and simply just render them so usually in Next.js how we do that we get this like get server side props and if you want to render this every single time the user requests a new page and we fetch the data on every single request we use the get server side props now because this is actually a products page that's why i need to use server side props because i need to fetch data or fetch the new products every single time i don't want to like statically generate those on build time because products are a very crucial stuff and i want to like always get the latest prices and discounts and get the latest products from the database and the api now this is how we usually do it in Next.js 12 implementation. We do get server side props, we access the ID or parameters from the context, we do a fetch in here, a regular, you know, a fetch we get from the API, we have local API in here, and you can use async await regularly in here, products response, we get products from the JSON, and simply return props, and we access that props. And this props obviously is going to get into the actual components, and we can do, you know, as we usually do it. But now, with Next.js 13, it's completely different. It's actually, in fact, a lot simpler and you don't need to think about how data is actually flowing between components and stuff. You can just use it naturally as you would do it in the back end or as you're just using a straight through framework to fetch data without worrying about anything else. So if you look at this, this is like the down here is actually the implementation of Next.js 13. 
Now, simply all you do, you create a function to fetch products. And this function obviously is just going to go in and fetch the products. So you do products response, you do fetch products, whatever. Uh, I'm just doing a wait in here just to visualize some, you know, delaying API response. So you can ignore that for now. And like, just go ahead and do like products response and get a JSON and just return this. And obviously I'm using async await. So this is this is a function that returns a promise. Now, if you look into our components, this is the component. This is the main component. And this is a server component. Now in Next.js 13, by default, any component you create without specifically specifying that this is a client component, it's by default a server component. So if you see something a little bit weird in here, yes, you're correct. And that's not weird anymore. So because here we're using fetch products and we're doing async aways directly inside of the React component, and we're using products directly to render that products and map through them. And this is absolutely a reality. And this is not a dream, you're not dreaming. And this won't cause a render loop or won't cause any issues. Why? Because now the new RFC of server components can handle async await inside of the component itself can wait for it can use suspend can use streaming, and can obviously render your data once it's ready and fetched from the API. So simple as that you can do server side rendering, or static site rendering. But there is one thing or one teeny tiny configuration you should pay attention to in order to be able to tell Oh, I want static site generation, or I want ICR for revalidation, or I want complete server side rendered on every single uh, request the user makes. So if you go back to the fetch, now the fetch supports a different kind of behaviors and how to handle those. So if you look at the first, I'm just having a comment here that says this is SSG. And this is like, if you do cash force cash, this will be a static site generation, because it's going to force cash on every single request. And it's only going to cache it once a build time. And this will be the same thing as doing get static site props for our component for the second option I'm using cache and doing no store. That means there will be no cache whatsoever, not on the CDN, no cache at all. And this is the same thing as doing SSR for our just calling or creator and reporting and get server side props for that component as well. And also if you want revalidation, so you want SSR plus ICR in here, ICR is basically just like SSR within just like, um, you know, a couple seconds that you want to wait before revalidating or like refreshing the data. So you put it in your option called next, just directly into the fetch in here, the fetch config option. So you do next, you put revalidates and you give it the number of seconds you want that actual, you know, cache and data to be revalidated since the last users visit. So so as simple as that, this is how Next.js 13 replaces the whole functions of get server side props or get static side props or even the revalidation, they are all replaced. And now they are part of the web standards, the fetch web standards with a simple configuration. And I absolutely adore that it's a lot simpler. And you don't have to worry about a lot of stuff. So since we want SSR in here, I'm just going to go ahead and comment this code. So I'm going to put cache, no store, and this will be for SSR. So I'm going to just go ahead and save this, go back and refresh. And obviously, this should do fetch or do SSR every single time we refresh the page. So to better test this and see if it's actually SSR or SSG or whatever, I'm going to put cache no store, that means I'm using SSR. And I'm going to do like create a console log in here fetching products to know when we are actually fetching products and when we're like reloading and everything. And also I put some two console logs in here to see exactly when this component is re rendering. And also I'm going to go do yarn build to create a production ready build. So you can actually test how everything is actually working. So I'm going to create that and actually start a build and create a new server. Now the server is actually running. So to test this, I'm going to go ahead and click refresh a couple of times to see if this is actually going to refresh and rerun the fetching function for us or not. And if you look at the logs, yes, it does. Because why I'm getting the logs in here and not getting on the actual browsers console because this is a server component. And this indeed runs in the back end and renders in the back end and only returns the HTML. So it doesn't run in the browser anyway. That's why I'm seeing it right over here in my terminals console. So if you look at this, like as clearly read render products components, and you get that and you get fetching products as well every single time we refresh. Now for SSG or static site generation, let's say we got like a blog in here. So this is actually our blog. And we're rendering a bunch of posts we're fetching from the API and everything. So this is actually the post and if you click on it, it actually takes you right into the post in here, just the same blog forward slash whatever the post ID, and you're gonna get like the body and the title and everything. So you simply in here, you got your blog. So this is actually the main blog page and you got the ID in here for the other page. And this is actually the post page. Now here simply we got a function to get get blog post, which is an async function and does a fetch. And most importantly, make sure you do force cache for the cache in here, 
or you can leave this as empty and the fetch in here will by default will fall back to the actual force cache in here in the cache. Now, once we access the actual post, so we go blog, then forward slash the ID of the current post, we render this page. So we render the ID page.jsx and now how we usually do it in Next.js version 12, like before the new version in here, we do get static side press because we want to statically generate blog posts. We don't want to like refetch the blog post every single time the user does a request to the server. We want to do this at build time. But now in next year 13, it got way much simpler than before. So before here, so if we look at this, we do just a simple fetch post, we do fetch the post that we usually do async awaits and everything. We fetch the post in here, we do a post and we pass it the ID. Now the ID is going to automatically pass through by next GS and you don't want to worry about that. So it's just like your components, your main components and your blog post components is going to have parameters and search parameters. And these are all automatically like passed through uh, from next GS. So I can easily access the ID. I can grab the ID and do fetch post as simple as that. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this generate static parameters is the same as get static pass before in Next.js 12. Now, if we try to actually run a production build to actually test if this is SSG or not, I'm going to go ahead and do yarn build and start that server. And it also added some console logs like refetching pose for the actual blog post in here whenever we do a get, get like get blog post or for the component to see if it's re-rendered or not. So now if we go back to the browser, go to the production server I built, and I'm going to just go to blog forward slash blog. I got that rendered as you see it was super fast. Now if I go back in here and actually put off my terminal, I shouldn't see anything. And that's actually the case. Now if I try to go to a single blog post, for example, this one, I mean, I have the console logs, but this is not doing any console logs. That means this was SSG and automatically rendered all the stuff. You can clearly see the blog for slash ID and the blog itself. They were statically generated compared to the products, which was like an SSR for server side rendering. It has a Lambda that means that was actually dynamic. Also, there is a really awesome feature from Next.js in here that allows you to export on every components like a layout or a page. You can export const dynamic or dynamic parameters or any of these values to a specific value to actually have a default kind of value for like uh, data fetching parameters, revalidation, and much more. So for example, here you can export from like the products page.tsx in here, which is the page component for rendering products, I can export dynamic. And this, if I look at it, I can tell it whether it's going to be forced to be dynamic or forced to be static or if an error is going to be like thrown out, if I try to use any dynamic values, so it's always going to like prevent you from falling apart or plenty of other values I really enjoy. So for example, if you do like first dynamic, this page will only have like the dynamic of everything. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I would really appreciate it if you can push that like button, subscribe as well, and give a try to the new Next.js version 13.